Hi folks, this is Alec Pierce from Scuba 2000 again with some tech tips, ideas that might make your scuba diving adventures a little more fun, safer, and a lot more fun. Today I want to talk about a subject that not too many divers and not too many dive stores share, and that is spearfishing. Now, <clears throat> like it or not, the sport of scuba diving that we all enjoy so much actually started as the sport of spearfishing. If you go back far enough, back to the early 50s, Looking at Skin Diver Magazine, which was the, the, the Skin Diver's Bible. It was called the Skin Diver Magazine. It was the Skin Diver's Bible. The first 10 years or so of Skin Diver Magazine monthly publication was all about spearfishing. Spearfishing techniques and equipment and contests that were being run all over North America. Or all over the world, actually. Spearfishing was a great big part of the underwater world. And, interestingly enough, it still is today. There are lots of places now where spearfishing is restricted, and that is an excellent effort to preserve reefs and to preserve the marine environment. However, there are also lots of places where spearfishing is not only possible, but it's encouraged. There are lots of fish. We don't take many anyway. And there are great opportunities. And I'm going to tell you from personal experience, spearfishing can be an awful lot of fun, done safely and done carefully. And there are some provisions in there. Let me start by showing you this little old gun right here that I've had for a long time. In fact, it was homemade when I was very, very young. That's what we had to do. There were no big fancy dive stores like Skiba 2000. If you wanted that good spear gun, you made it yourself. You got a nice piece of wood. You can see it here. And you got the metal. And you got the plans from Popper and Mechanics or Science and Mechanics. And you welded it up. You put a little spear in it. You pull the trigger. And it comes shooting out. And we had a lot of fun with these homemade guns. Eventually, as the sport of spearfishing grew, of course, manufacturers started making guns. And so today, we actually have very sophisticated, very affordable, and very durable spear guns for spear fishermen to use. There are some misconceptions about spearfishing. First of all, <clears throat> let me explain that spearfishing is quite legal. Owning, carrying a spear gun is quite legal. There are no laws against it. There are some areas in the world where spearfishing is restricted, but to have and to use a spear gun for your own enjoyment is quite legal. There are very few dive stores in North America, certainly in Canada, that still sell spearfishing equipment. There are some reasons for that. Spearfishing has declined as part of the underwater world activities, and also in Ontario at the very least, spearfishing is not legal. You cannot spearfish in the province of Ontario. There's lots of spearfishing across Canada in other areas, but not in Ontario. But around North America, and the marine environments in particular, and around the world, spearfishing is very popular. I've already shown you this old handmade gun. There are lots of different types of spear guns that you can purchase. This is a very popular model. It's small, very compact, only about 18 inches long, packs easily in the bottom of your dive bag. <clears throat> it's made of plastic, aluminum, and stainless steel. Easy to use, safe, used properly, of course. And this will allow you to take a good-sized fish. If you're in an area where spearfishing is possible, then you can use this to take a nice fish, maybe a four, five, six, ten, twenty pounder, up to about twenty pound fish. Nice yellowtail, uh, maybe a red snapper, a hogfish, and they are fantastic. You're going to eat it, of course. It is one of the rules of spearfishing today. Whatever you take, you eat. This is a typical spear gun that is available today for about a hundred dollars. Pretty inexpensive for a lot of fun you can get. They last forever. You can get longer guns. If you go to a dive store, there aren't many of the Hasbro guns. You can get a longer gun. Gives you a little more power, maybe a little more accuracy. If you're really enjoying yourself, then move up to something a little bit longer. Same type of gun. If you're really enjoying yourself and you have the opportunities, it often comes down to having opportunities, then this is a beautiful gun. Made by the same company, JBL. This is called the Explorer. There's a number of features that make it better than these other guns, more for the more experienced spear fishermen. A much heavier spear, so it hits the fish and kills quickly. It's a little bit longer, so again, it has more power. It'll take two bands. You see on the spear, there are two notches. This only has one band, but you can add a second band and give more power. So now you're looking at a 30, 40, 50, maybe a 60 pound fish. It's a lot of good eating for you and your friends. That's a butt plate, makes it much, much easier to load. These guns, by the way, we'll talk about loading briefly, are very easy to load. They don't use gun powder. You simply take the spear mounted with the safety on, and you take the rubber band, pull it down into the notch like so. I make that look easy, don't I? And then when you're ready to spear, you put the safety off, pull the trigger, and with practice, in no time at all, you'll be eating the fresh, freshest fish you've, fish you've ever had. 
just that simple. So this is an excellent gun for you to use, coming back to our spearfishing. This gun is a little bit different, stainless steel, aluminum, and there's no plastic. This is actually a cast aluminum. Beautiful gun, about $200 worth, and that gun will last you a long, long time, give you a lot of fun. You may notice if you're looking around, there are also other types of guns called pneumatic guns. They look more like this. They have no rubber bands. They have a piston in here that's under compressed air. You load it the same way, put the spear in, force it down to the bottom against that piston, and then when you shoot, the piston comes up, throws the spear out. Pneumatic guns are a little more expensive, a little more money to maintain as well, and uh, they don't work as well if you're in deeper water, but they are pretty handy. You need to ask your local dive store or someone that you're talking to which you should choose. Generally speaking, the rubber power guns are the most enjoyable. You can also get the old-fashioned pole spear. Now, here's a great example. This is a pole spear. And this particular pole spear, as you can see, comes in, out comes apart, comes into sections, and that sections they fit into a beautiful little bag that you can use to carry. They put it together, and now you have an excellent <clears throat> pole spear that you can use to take fish as well. This takes a lot more practice. It still has power. You see the rubber band down here? It still has power. You aim for the fish, and with practice, you can get fish very easy with these older pole spears as well. There's a real feeling of achievement when you take a nice fish using an old-fashioned pole spear. So there's a bit of information about spear guns, about the sport of spear fishing. If you have the opportunity, you're in an area, if you're diving in an area where spear fishing is available, then certainly give it a try. I think you'll find it exciting. At Scuba 2000, we actually run a PADI certification program called Underwater Hunter. We're going to learn all this information, learn how to use guns safely, and then we take you on a spearfishing trip. That's a lot of fun. This is Ali Pierce from Skiba 2000. I hope this has been interesting and exciting and has it made you think a little bit. If you have questions, write it on YouTube, send me a message. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Thanks. Bye-bye for now.